Hi, this is Jim Lang. In the last video, I talked about some action points that you could take to reduce the impact of the death of the stretch IRA. Most of those action points did relate to the proposed law. Well, the proposed law is so devastating that not only should you be looking at what you can do that is, let's say, directly on point, but you should also be a little bit sharper about what you are doing that might not be exactly on point. So what are some of those things? Well, one thing is you want to optimize your Social Security. The statistics vary, but it's clearly over 90% of married couples get Social Security wrong. Uh, the most common mistake, by the way, is taking Social Security too early um, not considering the survivor benefits and not considering the marital benefits. Um, again, I have a two-hour program just on Social Security alone, but I will say that particularly in the light of this law, we want to get Social Security right. The other thing that I see is I see people spending all over the place relative to how much money they can safely afford to spend. Now, fortunately, most of my clients who are making this mistake are spending less than they could afford to spend. So therefore, the, let's say, greatest harm is that they didn't have the pleasure and enjoyment during their lifetime of spending more money. And you might say, well, gee, Jim, I have my house that I'm happy with. I have my cars that I'm happy with. What could I spend more money on, even if I could afford to? And I and not, it's not an original thought, but this goes to Jonathan Clemens, we would both say spend money on experiences with family and friends rather than buying things. So I'm not saying that you should take money, go out and blow it on a new Mercedes or a house that you don't need or whatever it might be, but it would be a shame if you could clearly afford to enjoy some lifetime experiences. Um, my father-in-law takes the entire family on a long weekend at, at a resort and our family is so much tighter and it's just such a great use of funds that I advocate that, um, I would say, for everybody that could afford it. So anyway, learn what the safe withdrawal rate is. Find out how much money you can safely afford to spend. If you're spending too much, well, then you have to cut back, but if you're not spending nearly enough, think about having some family experiences. Another thing is, and we are big believers, in well-diversified set of index funds. Um, we, yes, it is true that that is one of our services that we provide where we do the strategy. We have a great low-cost index advisor um, who actually manages the money and we charge actually one fee, which is anywhere between 50 basis points and 1% for both services. But whether you use us or whether you're a do-it-yourself Vanguard person or whether you use another advisor, um, we are big believers in low-cost index funds as opposed to actively managed money. The other thing that we are big on is we like to look at everything in context. So what happens in the real world is most people's financial position is not the result of a well thought out strategy that encompasses all their assets. It is more the result of a bunch of individual decisions, each one that seemed to make sense at the time. So let's say for discussion's sake that at some point you talk to the person in the 401k administration and they made a recommendation for the asset allocation in the 401k. And then maybe you went to a money manager and he manages a chunk of money and he made a recommendation for asset allocation or investments, let's say, outside the 401k. Then maybe you read an article or maybe you even heard one of my talks on Roth IRA conversions and you converted at least a certain chunk to a Roth IRA. Then at some point you realized you needed a will and beneficiary designations, etc. And you went to an attorney and you got that. And then at some other point, you know, you heard about somebody that died and you said, oh no, what if this, but anyway, a lot of times some very smart people, and I'm not saying that they end up with something that isn't good, but it certainly isn't optimal because it wasn't thought out in unison. 
What we like to do is take a look at the whole thing. We like to run the numbers. All right, so where will you be in 30 years if you use, let's say, strategy number one? Let's call strategy number one taking Social Security at 62 and not doing any Roth conversions. Then strategy number two is, well, let's take Social Security at 62 and do a series of Roth conversions. Then strategy number three is, well, let's hold off for Social Security either till 66 or 70 or whatever it might be. And then there's different vari various uh, spousal benefit variations, and then maybe a series of Roth conversions. Then number four might be the same thing, but maybe incorporate a gifting plan. So there's multiple what we call running the numbers. We are big fans of running the numbers. And the first year you do it, it's a big deal. And you need a very skilled person to run those numbers. Um, we have quite a few engineers who make some, sometimes quite reasonable attempts at running those numbers themselves. But frankly, if you are a trained CPA and you've been doing this for 20 years, you can sometimes come up with some very meaningful results that will help people decide what is the best course. Anyway, we like to run the numbers, then come up with an integrated strategy, might include Roth and Social Security and how much money you can spend and what kind of investments that you should be looking at and what kind of asset allocation you should be making, and then figure out what needs to be done and then implement it. Then run numbers at least every year and say, okay, what has happened in the past year? How, what, what is the dynamic change? Is there a change in investments, et cetera, et cetera? And then adjust accordingly. So I've always been a big fan of this, but with this proposed legislation of the death of the stretch IRA, things are so much more fluid and there's so much greater opportunity for A, um, terrible mistakes, and B, wonderful opportunities that you can take advantage of. I like the idea, running the numbers, coming up with an integrated strategy, implementing it, and then reviewing it um, at least once a year. I hope this video has been helpful. If you are interested in more information, one of the things that you could do is click on the link below that will guide you to a one-hour webinar where we talk a lot more about the death of the stretch IRA, how it works, and what you should be doing about it. Thank you.